Hello, good afternoon. Welcome back to Adobe Life, the XD portion of the stream. I'm Alexis Bustos and joining me today is Howard Pinsky. Hello, Howard. How are you? Hey, Alexis. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Hello. Hello, Megan and Voodoo Val. It's good to see some faces that we know. Shell's back. People joining us from yesterday. We're on part two of a two-day stream with Howard, going through some amazing new features in XD and uh, creating a gamer experience. And uh, I'm really excited to keep going for today. Uh, Tuesday, man, it feels like a Tuesday. It does feel like a Tuesday. I think this entire year has felt like a Monday <laughs> or a Tuesday. It's like the Monday to Wednesday, three day. That's what this is 2020 is, if it's a day in the week. Uh, well, this is awesome. I can't wait to get started. But first, why don't we check out what's happening today in the, on the schedule? What happened? What's going to happen right after? We got started with Julia this morning, bright and early. We did a bunch of uh, daily creative challenges, uh, one for Premiere and Photoshop and Illustrator with Jason Jesus. And it's it's going to be, you guys did great. I mean, seriously, daily creative challenges all over the place. And I love it. And if you guys aren't familiar, get in on these. Uh, we had Mike earlier with uh, drawing and painting, and we're here with Howard right after our stream. Get on there with uh, Jesse Showalter, who's doing the XD Creative Challenge, and then following at the following right at the end. Last but not least is Alice Lee and Susan with Doodle Therapy. I love me some Doodle Therapy personally. Oh, it, they they run a great show. Alice is wonderful. Oh my gosh, all all these streams. These are these are just pros on pros this week. Um, and I can't, I can't wait to, to see what all of you guys create and put in the discord for these daily creative challenges. So we'll get there. Um, at the end of the, towards the end of the stream, we're going to do some artist spotlights again from our community. I'm really excited for that. Um, but before we do that, Howard, let's do it. Let's get, let's get it. Let's get it moving. I'm excited. Yeah, this is going to be exciting. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm big into gaming. Although I didn't, I didn't score myself an Xbox Series X this morning. I've been trying. If you see me look over here halfway through the stream, I'm checking my local Targets and Walmarts to see if they restock them. But oh, haven't been so lucky. But you know, I'm, I'm I'm a big gamer. Gaming has played a big part of my life. So I figured let's create some sort of a gaming experience during these Adobe Live sessions and. It's been a lot of fun. You know, I don't know exactly where I'm going with this experience. I'm kind of keeping it a little bit generic, which is fun, which is fine, right? We can always take it in another direction. And I may continue this um, over the course of the weeks. I run my master classes on Friday. I also run letsxd.com. So if you're new to Adobe XD, in addition to the daily challenge that we run and these live streams, which we do just about every single day, you can go over here, watch some videos. We have some new features that recently came out, including 3D transforms, which is wonderful. You're gonna see a little bit more of that today during the stream. Anytime I can, I try to squeeze in some 3D transforms. And many people in the community are creating some amazing things with these new features, which is so cool to see. And I know the team internally is working hard on additional features, uh, improvements, a lot of fun stuff coming in 2020. Oh yeah. And if anyone is new to XD and this is your first stream, thank you for joining us. Um, I would definitely direct you to, directly to letsxd.com. Everything you need to get started is going to be there. A lot of new updates happen. So it's great to have this resource. Um, yeah, today's a gamer. It's a gamer stream mm -hmm. again. We're doing it. We got a lot of gamers in the chat. We know Voodoo Val mm -hmm. is a gamer. Um, let us know. Let us know chat where you're coming from, what you like to what your favorite game is. Let's, let's do some uh, let's do some gaming mm. here. Indeed, yeah. So just to kind of recap what we did yesterday, we started off the day looking for a little bit of inspiration. And I mentioned that typically when I'm starting a project, whether I have an idea or I don't have an idea, 
I start on Behance and I start on Dribble, and I'll just you know do a search for gaming in this case, or over here you can search for what you know if you're looking for a specific you know one thing I like about Dribble is that you can find very specific things on there, you know, a menu bar or a navigation or icons, right? Behance is more about the overall project experience, which is wonderful. So looking at these gaming projects, you know, if I open up this one, haven't checked this one out, so hopefully it's all safe, but it looks like it might be. This, you know, it looks like an esports experience, right? And it goes through the entire process of the user flow to the wireframes and the I onboarding love experience. I love treatment of wireframes on this product. Right? Oh, that's great. This is what I love to see on Behance is these very in-depth case studies and projects. This is so cool. So you can get so much inspiration and ideas from just browsing Behance and Dribble. Sometimes I'll just browse Behance and Dribble all day. And that's what I do, right? Well, I, I you know, speaking of, if anybody's joining us, uh, on YouTube, come on over to Behance. There's a chat going here as well. Um, if you want to see these case studies, uh, you know, right on your screen, come over to Behance. This is where it all lives. And I will agree, Behance is way more like case study driven, which is so, so important. But you want those micro interactions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was good for that. Indeed. So we're in XD now. And, you know, we started yesterday by defining a few colors and a little bit of gradients. I love bright fancy colors and some really nice gradients we talked a little bit about how you know gradients shouldn't necessarily be too harsh unless your project dictates that right but something like this is a little bit it's going to be a little bit muddy a little bit difficult to work with so keep your gradients fairly subtle you know you're going from this nice light pink to a fairly light purple it adds this nice soothing experience and it allows you to Put things on top of it and not have to worry about some parts of it blending in with some parts of the gradient in the background so i love me a good gradient right and a gaming experience in specific really allows you to use those gradients i don't want to say as much as you want because you should kind of pull it back a little bit right <laughs> but it allows you to do things like neon experiences and maybe 3d transforms possibly which we explored down here and, you know, we, we ended the day working on this card here, which I'm going to make a few small tweaks to. I also want to make a few small tweaks to the overall experience, um, just to kind of clean things up a little bit. Some of it was rushed, but I would love in the chat if anyone has suggestions on what we should be doing, adding, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Throw it in there. We're going to be taking a look. Oh, definitely. Cornell's already labeling the stream. It's called Let's Play Adobe XD. Oh, I love that. We should... And we should do like an actual gaming stream on Adobe Live <laughs> one day. That'd be really fun. Yeah. So one thing I want to do is, you know, I've got this, this game on text and I, I used the regular Tor Nova typeface, right? And I really like that G that we're, we're kind of got going on. So I want to, I want to start to emphasize this G, maybe we'll eventually use it as the logo. I mean, this panda up here is just super cute, right? Mm -hmm. How can you replace that? But I want to kind of bring more focus to this G and this G may come into play when we move on to the mobile aspect of this app. So, you know, I have here, it's currently a stack. So if I were to, you know, duplicate this, right? It's going to bump it down. So what I want to make sure to do is pop this into a group so that everything inside of this group is looked at almost as one object in this stack. So that'll allow me to duplicate this on top. And what I want to do now is essentially separate this G. So I've got just the G here. And then on this text layer, I will just get rid of that G, right? And just move this stuff over. And this will allow me to really bump up the size just to bring focus to this lovely G, right? Oh, that's cool. And so you're being, you're able to move that and manipulate it in, uh, in a very, without staying within the stacks, but you're in the stacks because you grouped it. Right. Wow. Yes. That is some now, meta thinking, Howard. <laughs> I know, right? You have to think about it in your head and you're like, does it make sense? I think it makes sense, right? <laughs> um, now you can kind of see that process playing out here. I want, essentially what I want to do now is grab this text layer and move it 
right about under here to kind of collapse things a little bit, but it's not letting me because stacks enabled. I can move it horizontally in this vertical stack. So what I, all I have to do is just grab the text layer and just pop it into this group that we just created. And that will allow me to move it on over. Very nice. There we go. And the buttons, as you can see, still remain in that stack. Let me just go ahead and name this header. That looks pretty good. And we've got our buttons and it may want to increase the spacing just so we have a little bit more breathing room. And one thing I always stress when I'm doing these designs and, and not everyone's going to fall into this category, but I like designing very zoomed in. You know, I'm pretty close in right now. Sometimes I'll even go even further if I'm working on these buttons, right? But you lose, you lose that perspective of what you're designing. You lose how far things are apart from each other. So, you know, either zoom out or hit the play button at the top. Whoops, my, it's on my other monitor and it'll launch the preview just so you can kind of get an idea of how things are looking. And for the most part, I think things are looking pretty good right now. Everything's kind of nice and compact. The title is all nicely together and we've got our lovely glitchy button that we created yesterday using that glitch plugin. Isn't that fancy? So fancy. Love the glitch plugin. If you guys uh, want to want to know what plugin we're using, it's called Glitch and it's awesome. And wow, yesterday's stream was all about it. So go check it out. Uh, yep. Love that effect. I know, me too. And I do see that um, Shahiriar if I mispronounce your name, I do apologize, is mm -hmm. talking about the alignment. And one thing I would definitely recommend, oops, I mean, you can definitely use your grid too, but also drag out some guides. That way you can really dive in here and get really nitpicky and make sure that your text layers and all your fun stuff is nicely aligned. Oh, it's there you close, go. Right? Now see all the perfectionists, all the professional uh, perfectionists in the chat are, are like, yep. take a deep sigh of relief. <laughs> I hope so. Looks good. Looks really good. All right. So that's looking pretty good. Now, you know, we, we got a little bit fancy yesterday and we we created this kind of carousel in 3D. I don't know how I'm feeling about it. I think it's it's fun to look at, but from a practical sense, I don't know if it makes sense. What do you think, Alexis? Yeah, I, I, I expect that to be a lot. I, I tie the carousel in with a actual movement of the carousel. So if that animated, uh, that would be really cool. But if it's, sta if it's static like it is, yeah, I think we could, we could probably simplify it. Probably would look better just kind of straight I agree. on. Yeah. So 3D transforms, you can have it on, you can have it off, doesn't matter. But if you want to reset your transformations, right click and then reset. You can also select multiple objects and reset the transformations. And now we are back to a nice flat view, which I think, again, looks a little bit more practical. It's probably a little bit easier on the eyes. And you're absolutely right, Alexis. It kind of gave the impression that something was gonna move mm -hmm. and nothing really moved. So I think it makes more sense now. Yes. And we also have the, everything's lagging a lot for me for some reason today. I'm not sure what I have open, but things are lagging. So I apologize for that. But we also have the hover effects that we created yesterday, right? And I added a little bit of a glow behind it and a little bit of a subtle border. And now as of XD34, which we released at Adobe Max, if you missed yesterday's session or you missed the news completely, nested hover is now possible. So I have this hover effect here, right? And I can also hover over top of the icons which are instances of this main component, which is now the default behavior. Just Look like that. that. Look at that. Yeah. A hover within a hover. Mm, it's the small details. Mm -hmm. And then we have down here, it's a little bit too much spacing. I, I will fix that. We have this section for upcoming events. And one thing I wanted to highlight inside of this section is a brand new plugin that was recently released. I think a few days ago, possibly. Let me just align this, 24, beautiful. And I actually designed this plugin live on one of my XD master classes, and it was developed by Walter Camaro. And that's the Fancy Maps plugin. I'm so excited to finally see this um, come to life. Yeah, we have a lot of whoa, whoa, wows in the chat. I think we're about to get ready. We're about to see oh another. <laughs> Yeah, so this plugin was a lot of fun to design and 
you know, my, my thought behind this plugin was that I do a lot of designs, whether it's in the daily challenges or my masterclass that require maps. There's a lot of experiences that you want to map in it, right? Some of them are country level. Some of them are city level. Some of them are even street level. And there used to be a plugin a long time ago that allowed you to bring in maps. It was okay. And then it kind of, it disappeared. I I don't know why, but it just poof, went gone. Bye bye. So I wanted another one and I wasn't able to find any developers who would do it. So I figured maybe if I dive onto my, one of my master classes, design the plugin, maybe it'll kind of attract some developers to actually bring it to life. And, you know, Walter stepped up and he, he was connected with our XD development team and it's here. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure to select, I'm going to name this map. I'm going to make sure to select a shape could be any shape and hop into my plugins panel. And then I'm going to go to the fancy maps plugin. And of course you can install plugins by pressing the plus button at the top and then browsing plugins. We have a, a new list plugin. UI faces is great. Stark undraw. There's hundreds of plugins that you can download and Val just linked it in the chat. Thank you, Val. All right. So I'm going to hop into the fancy map plugin and there are a few options right away. You know, one thing I really wanted to do is sometimes you, you honestly don't care where the map is. You just need a map. So choosing a surprise destination, you don't care. You don't have to enter an address. You just click on that. You're taken to a random spot, which is wonderful. We have some popular destinations, Tokyo, Barcelona, Paris, and etc. Or if you did need a specific city, town, street, you can enter that down at the bottom. Looks like Cornell says, does fancy map... Oop. He deleted his, his question. I'll keep a lookout mm -hmm. for it. All right. So let's go ahead and I love Tokyo. So let's go oh, ahead and choose Tokyo. I love Tokyo. Right. Yeah. Have you been? I have. I have actually. My Ooh. coffee cup is from Tokyo right now. Oh, fancy. I was supposed to go. Well, actually, I was supposed to go la at the end of last year mm -hmm. and that got pushed back a little bit. I was supposed to go this year. And of course, this year happened. So uh, hopefully next year. <laughs> you'll get there and until then we have the fancy maps to take us indeed all right let's see uh wouldn't it be faster for the team to make a dark mode plugin um in short probably not um you know the apis are not that deep and even you know it's a long conversation about dark mode there, there are design systems that we have to follow at Adobe. It's our spectrum design system. There are also guidelines for the various operating systems. So Mac OS has their dark mode uh, guide, guidelines. Windows has their dark mm -hmm. mode guidelines. And then there's like Windows UWP and then the new thing. It's, it, it's a very complicated process. That's kind of why dark mode doesn't exist just yet. And I don't, I don't believe that a plugin is the solution, but who knows what the future holds. Uh, Cornell has a question around fancy maps. Uh, does the fancy map support all cities and countries? I don't know. That's a good question. I would imagine so. Cause I've, I've gone through the, uh, the surprise destination thing. And me, I don't, I don't even know how to pronounce this place. It used Uzbekistan, but I don't know what, so it seems like it has very obscure places. And these, I believe are completely random. Every time you press it, there's Montana. Oh, yeah. There's Australia, United Kingdom, China, right? So there's, it seems like there's Kyoto. I don't know. So I, I would assume so, but go ahead and plug in some, some cities down there and, and let me know. Yeah. All right. So Tokyo, let's go ahead and just zoom into, you know, city street level. And I love that we have different styles. So it's not, if you're working on an experience that's a little bit darker, you can, you know, just choose these styles and see these beautiful previews at the top and then wow. just apply the map. This is a great plugin. Look at that. Wow, we have look a cool, at that. Right? There's our event. Very cool. I love each, I love the variety of style. Like you really went with a, with a large range of, of color combinations and really, uh, it's really your one map, one map has it all type of app or type of plugin um question around uh the street levels and like is it just that's just a zoom in you're right essentially yeah oh cool cool i cool. believe so nice yeah all right so 
I know yesterday some people were asking about the PS5 UI that I posted on Twitter not too long ago. And I do want to get to that. But I also want to build a little bit more on this experience because I, I want to show the process of going from a desktop experience or a website experience to a mobile experience. And I know there's a lot of different opinions. There are a lot of questions about this. What's the, do you use responsive resize? Do you redesign it completely? What's the deal there? And a lot of it will kind of come down to your personal preference and also the different projects. Some of them you'll be able to, you know, grab your artboard, turn responsive resize on and do your thing, right? And some of the areas will, will kind of, you know, resize as you would expect. But personally, I like kind of redesigning things from scratch because a lot of experiences, I'm going to go ahead and choose an iPhone artboard over here. A lot of experiences are very different on your device than they are on the desktop, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it, again, personal preference comes down to the project, but you can very easily just grab some of these elements and reuse them. So I might just grab this background image. Yeah, that is the, that is the ultimate question. Um, resizing for various screens, you know, is it, you know, each screen you're going to experience differently, right? And you have different, different points of, of interest, what your, what your eye is drawn to, what you want, maybe if you're on mobile versus on your actual like desktop, you're out and you're running around, you know, what needs, your needs are different. So why not, you know, why not start again? Um, yeah, instead exactly. of just going through a resize, which sometimes, sometimes totally brings the same vibe and in, into the experience, but it's one of those things where you, you know, as an, a UX designer really does need to think these things through. Um, yep, absolutely. And, and let us know in the chat, you know, what your personal preference is. Do you try to resize things using responsive resize or do you just design it from scratch? That's a good question. All right. So I talked a little bit earlier about this lovely G that we created using the regular Tor Nova. I keep saying created. I didn't do anything. I just pressed the letter G on my keyboard. But I want to, again, kind of bring that in and maybe use it as either a logo mark or something. So I'm going to just copy and paste it onto this artboard, maybe make it a little bit larger. And I think this could be a good opportunity to bring back that glitch plugin that we explored mm. yesterday. So hopping into plugins. So Megan says, start from scratch. Nice. I'm going to go to the glitch plugin. And I do want to bring in some of the colors that we've been using. So hopping into my document assets, I'm going to right click and copy this hex code. I'm going to paste it in here. And let's actually try that purple that we defined yesterday. So I'm going to copy that and paste it here. All right. And let's just see what the default settings look like. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, I bet we could change it up a bit. I bet we could. What, what do you think we should do to this? Oh, that, uh, that top is really interesting how it pulled, it pulled away. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Like, what are some other parameters we can play with with, with, the, with the glitch plugin? Yeah, so let's go back and hop into plugins again. So we can choose the amount of lines. So we had it set at two and then the horizontal shift. So basically how far it goes from the original shape. Let's play with some horizontal. All right, let's crank this up and see what happens. It might be a bit too much, but okay. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah I didn't notice too much of a difference. But... I didn't notice any. I, I didn't notice any. Um, yeah. What is the amount of lines? Oh, look at that. That's interesting. Yeah. So I think the horizontal shift might come into play when you start kind of increasing the amount of lines. It looks like it kind of moved it a little bit further. That's very cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll leave it somewhere around here. That looks okay. It's not great, but I think it'll do for now. We like it. We like it. A lot of people are saying they're, they designed from scratch. Interesting. Let's see you guys. No, it's great. You know, it's one of those things. It's just really your preference and what you like. Uh, also, you know, like what you want your experience to be for your for your mobile for mobile. Yeah, I completely agree. 
All right. So give me, uh, give me TikTok vibes, you know, this glitch. Oh, interesting. That's what it, kinda, it is. Yeah. I was like, why does this look so familiar? That could be it. Hmm. Yeah. We figured out their secret. Just a plug in. <laughs> yeah. Now, one more thing we want to do is possibly, since this might be a loading screen or the welcome screen, are just add, you know, we want to add two buttons. Now we do have buttons that we created yesterday, right? You probably remember that. I can just drag this in here. But here's here's the thing you might want to think about: is that this button and it's a component that we created. The main component has padding turned on, and we did that. Hey, Cody, welcome. We did that so that when we resize the button, let's say we want to, you know, browse browse games or when we change the label on the button that button resizes as you'd expect now in a situation like this that works perfectly because you want that button to resize however on a mobile design you probably you may not want that if you take a look at many buttons on screens like this the buttons for the most part are this exact same size and they kind of span across the width of this artboard um, someone's asking, what font is that? So mm -hmm. this one, the G before I applied all those crazy effects to it is Regulator Nova. And I've also been using Poppins, as you can see in my assets over to the left. So in this case, I'm actually going to, let me actually drag out a few guides, 32 and 32. I might have to bring them out a little bit more, but we'll start with this. You know what? Let's bring it out to about 40. All right, and I'm just going to create new buttons. This is a this is a I think in a standalone app, not a not a web, not more like a web experience. Yeah, this will definitely be more of a a standalone app rather than just like a resized version of the website. Oh, that's very large. Oh yeah, and, and all these fonts, both these fonts you can find on fonts.adobe.com. Just pick them up and use them. Mm -hmm. the it's a G. great resource. Yeah, I've been, I'm looking at this, right? I, this is, this is, these are the decisions you go through as a designer. <laughs> um, you know, I love this typeface. I think it works well for headers and things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when it comes to call to actions and buttons, I typically like to dial things back a little bit and just kind of, I don't want to say, maybe flatten things out. Just more standard, you know, standardize your buttons. Yeah. So for so something like better. this, I would, yeah, I would go for Poppins, for example. Look at that yeah it's one of those things where it's uh it's better to be literally better to be safe than sorry you want your user to at the bare minimum understand what they're right about what about they're about to do sign in yep. log in sign up what have you i agree and you don't have to you know overthink these things you know the the welcome screen mm -hmm. and the sign up screen it has a purpose. It's not meant to be super flashy. You can add a little bit of color here and there, but I would stay away from crazy fonts and typefaces and things like that and just kind of dial things back Absolutely. and keep it uh, simple. And we also have to remember, you know, these are going on a phone. It's a smaller space. It's all, you know, it's in your hand. These buttons, they, they look great up close, but you know, when you pull them away and they're like a foot and a half from your face and hard to see, you gotta make sure it's a, visually accessible. I agree. All right. I like so, that void, the photo you're using. It's like that that endless void. I know, it just kind of goes back there. I wonder what's, what is back there? I'm curious. Something, something. The end of the year, 2021's back there. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. If you want to get creative, you can make these buttons kind of follow the perspective of this. You probably shouldn't do this, but you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one of the cool things that trans, uh, 3D Transform allows. You know, like you have these these spaces that uh, you have these images that maybe you want to mock up a, a future a future experience when we all have, when there's no more screens and everything is just, you know, projected on our 
on our walls. So fun. Yeah. This is this is a great it's a great prototyping app for every type of experience. Um, now that the three three D transform is here, that is clear. indeed. So I'm going to duplicate this artboard and let's kind of start mocking up what the home screen might look like. Now we have this background image and for readability and accessibility, probably don't want this looking like this. So I'm going to change the background color of the entire artboard to black. Now you're not seeing it because there's an image on top of it, but, and then I'm going to just drop the opacity of this image to about 10% or so, just so there's a little hint of it there, but it's not going to really get in the way of accessibility, which is what we want. So there are a few things that we're going to add to this particular screen. We might want, you know, an area at the top with the logo, maybe a profile picture, a search icon or a messages icon. We'll want some sort of a feed. And I'm thinking like Instagram style where these big images, the ability to comment, and then possibly a navigation area down at the bottom. Now, I am working with the iPhone, what is it, the 10S or 10R, they're 10 something or other, a lot, of, a lot of different names and numbers in the iPhones. So you have to keep in mind that at the top, about the first like 45 pixels or so, there's that lovely notch that we all absolutely love, right? And at the bottom, there's a home indicator. It's that little white bar, sometimes it's a black bar at the bottom. Um, that allows you to swipe up on your iPhone so you can go back to the home screen. It's important that you don't put anything back there that you need your users to interact with. So don't put icons back there. If, you're, if you need navigation icons, bump them up a little bit. The, the home indicator at the bottom, somewhere, I know, 24 pixels, somewhere around there, it's not as thick as the notch at the top. So you have a little bit more room down there, but keep those two in mind. Are you a fan of the notch, Alexis? I <laughs> oh man, I remember. I remember when the notch came in into play. Uh, I'm not not a fan. <laughs> not not a fan. <laughs> I feel like I, I started designing a uh, mobile pre notch, and yeah, I can just remember the day that it kind of people started. We started using them more in our mockups, and I just it was just one of those things where we're like, wow, this is a new, this is new. Okay, let's design around this thing. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is really in the way now. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's fine. Honestly, it's, it's not too bad. Yeah. For the most part, I, I did think it would be very distracting, but for the most part, you don't even notice it in your day to day. No, not at all. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, you know, when you mock up, so when you mock off these, mock up these using the, when you use the guides to mock the area and you're, and you're really seeing what type of space you have, it's not that much. And it's one of those things where, um, I love, I love a blank slate um, because it just kind of reinforces you to think about like what this mobile experience is and can I, how can I design even better than I did the time before, you know, like, and it's, and it's not very much space. We're talking like, we're talking inches here in yeah. real life. And um, it's amazing to think about apps that you don't even realize that are utilizing that space so well. Um, and it's just one of those things where it always amazes me. It always amazes me that like your whole life can exist on these like couple inches of a screen. I know it's crazy. It's amazing what these phones can do. This little tiny thing in your pocket basically has like everything we can possibly need. And yet we all watch cat videos all day. I mean, who, uh, yeah, we all do it. Who doesn't want to watch a cat video all day? <laughs> That's how the internet got started. We are mm -hmm. here because of cat videos. <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, so right now I am in the Nucleo application. It's a third party application and I use it at, basically as an icon manager. They do have their own icons that you can purchase. I don't believe I have, that's why there's a lock icon. I have not purchased it, but I do have some icon sets that either I purchased or were given to me. And I just want to use some of these icons for the various elements on this application. So a chat bubble, for example, I'm going to copy that and just pop it directly into XD. And they are vector, they're all SVG, so I can resize them if I needed to. But what I'm doing up here is I wanna just set a few, you know, few call to actions, also the logo. And I did pull in the logo that we created a few moments ago with that glitch. And I was going back and forth on whether just to have a white standard G or the glitch logo. But I think, you know, I think it kind of looks fun. I like it, yeah. It's a very I subtle it line now in the way it's sized. So it 
looks good. Yeah. And you're, you're absolutely right. It does kind of look like it's got that TikTok vibe to it. I didn't notice that at first. <laughs> it does. I was, I, I didn't either. I was like, why does this look so familiar? I was like, Howard, have you already designed this? No, this is, looks like TikTok. <laughs> Uh, now, one more thing I want to point out that's super important is this icon here is a little bit small. You know, it's 22 pixels by 21, so it's about 22 pixels. Visually, it looks fine, right? But you need to keep in mind that there are people with bigger fingers, there are people with smaller fingers, and there are guidelines for iOS. And typically, it's going to differ from uh, operating system to operating system. Typically, you want your hot spots, your touch spots, whatever you want to call them, to be around 42 to 45 pixels. So because we have a 22 pixel icon, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hop into this group and just create a spot that's somewhere around, like, let's, we'll go for 42 pixels and just center it where this icon is. And you can kind of see that these smart guides are letting me know that it's centered. I'm going to make sure it's behind it. And then just drop the opacity to zero so you don't have to see it. But what you're given is the same icon looks visually identical to what it did before. However, we now have this much larger spot that we can use. So when we're prototyping this thing, mm -hmm. we now have a 42 pixel area that people can touch on. So if they just miss the icon a little bit to the left or above, they're still gonna you know, get what they want, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That hit, it really opens up that hit area. And it's it just does. a great way to just make sure everything's aligned. If you're a perfectionist, like most designers are, uh, this chick, I remember when I learned this tip, I was like, my mind went, and I was like, this is so much easier than trying to align a curved object. Um, so I really, I really recommend working that into your workflow. I think it definitely, that's a pro tip. Yeah. And you know, let's, let's continue that conversation, right? So down here with the navigation area, I'm thinking four icons that are the same size and then one icon that's a little bit larger and that'll be maybe the the main focus of this application maybe you're going to go live for example so you know we're going to start off just dragging out something like this this might be the go live icon and we're going to center it now a problem that some people might run, run into is that because if you'll take a look at the nucleo application and if i just go to all icons for example get rid of this there are a lot of icons that are different sizes. Some are a little bit more narrow. Some are a little bit taller. Some might be 22 pixels tall. Some might be 25 pixels tall or wide or whatever it might be. And when you're trying to align things evenly at the bottom and you have this one icon that you need to stay in the center, it gets a bit tricky. So going back to what Alexis was talking about mm -hmm. is one thing you might want to do Actually, for this screen, I'm going to bring this back to about 24 pixels. We'll see what that looks like. Um, eh, 24. Mm. One thing I, I, I wish I want to see in XD at some point is better control over guides, but maybe we'll get there. So I'm going to drag out my 42 pixel box that we're going to use. And this will allow me to now create additional ones and I can use my distribution options at the top. So I can just go ahead and select all these icons. I'm holding down my shift key, selecting them all, and then aligning them up. And it'll just make sure that everything, no matter the size of that icon, it just stays the same. Hmm. See, that's that in my head is just, that's doing my job for me. That is- Indeed. That's everything. All right. And we can also use those areas, hitboxes, whatever you want to call them, to place our icons in. So. The first one we might want is a home icon. And I love this icon. I use it mm. so much. It's got this fun little wave at the bottom. It's like your home by the sea. Yeah, it's <laughs> just so cute. Someone's commented earlier in the chat, I forget who it was, uh, that we are giving them such wholesome vibes. And I really oh, do feel good. that for this stream. It's a very calming, it's Tuesday. We're not here to, we're here to amp you up and keep you going. Here to drink coffee with you and design. Absolutely. The <laughs> world needs more home. wholesome vibes. Exactly. Here's this little home on the beach, beachfront property. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. All right. Let's look for a video icon. And this would be possibly, you know, maybe clips that your friends may have saved from the games they play. So an icon like this, a little bit difficult to see because it's gray for some reason, but I can paste it into XD 
it is vector, so I can just do that and pop this in the center of this box. Again, I don't have to worry that it's a bit taller or a bit wider than the other one. It's gonna stay centered because I now have this hitbox that I'm working with. Now for this next icon over here beside this record icon, I'm thinking, you know, it's a gaming experience. Gamers love achievements, they love badges. So maybe there'll be a place where you can go to see your badges, right? And this again, goes directly what we were talking about. This icon is not very wide. It's tall, it'll be the same height. And if you were to make it uh, wider like this, right? It's gonna be too tall. Mm -hmm. So without these hit boxes, it would be very difficult to align these things. Just things mm -hmm. would not line up properly. Love that, love that hit box. Um, hi from Germany, hello. Anybody who is just joining us, like Nikolai from Germany, welcome, welcome to the stream. I'm here with Howard Pinsky and we are creating an interactive gaming experience. And we have a mobile and web version. And um, anyone joining from YouTube, love YouTube, come on over to Behance, hang out with us in the chat. I can't see the chat on YouTube. So if you're asking questions, bring them over. Um, and yeah, thank you for joining us today. Indeed. Thank you, everyone. I love seeing people from all over the world. It's so cool. I know. It's so cool. I love it. Howard, you are in Colorado. I might be. I might not be. You never oh, know. Oh, ooh, okay. Yes, I love it. You are in... I could be North in Tokyo Pole. for all you know. Ooh, I love it. Let's just say where we aren't. Let's, let's say that wherever we aren't. So I I'm am... I'm not in Massachusetts. <laughs> I'm not in Argentina. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, who knows? But with, you know, with the remote situation and, you know, a lot of companies kind of pushing that direction, people could be wherever, anywhere, you know, we, we personally work with people all over the world. We've got offices and teams just everywhere. It's, it's kind of cool. Oh, it's awesome. It's the best. And it, it's one of those things where sometimes you think you're creating and you're designing and you know, and you know what you're doing. And immediately as you, as soon as you put it in front of somebody, say from, from Tokyo, from Japan, um, mm -hmm. it's a whole different understanding of what your design look like, looks like, refers to. Uh, it's just really important to always have a variety of people looking at what you're creating because sometimes your assumptions are completely wrong. I agree. Or, the, or they're the one just thing made I will... for one type of person, which isn't how why we should be designing. That's true. That's why user testing is so unbelievably important because, you know, even, even if you're a, you know, think of, you know, the XD team, for example, right? We're, when we started, I wasn't at Adobe at the time, but when the XD team started, it was a, a few, a handful of people, a few dozen, maybe a hundred or so. I don't know the exact number, but, and now they're possibly over a thousand. So there's a lot of people working on the XD team. It's a thousand people who are working on this project. They have assumptions on what designers might want, but it's only a thousand people. And some of them are not designers, they're engineers, not to say that engineers can't design, but that's not their focus, right? So getting the product or ideas into hands of hundreds of thousands, millions of people is really gonna help validate some of those assumptions. A hundred percent. And uh, and that's the beauty of this awesome community here on Adobe Live, you know, Behance has so many types of, different types of people creating so many different types of uh, products and ideas. Um, I think of Behance as more of like this a really awesome idea space, like everyone's canvas. And you can see on there, I love, I love seeing a different language applied. Uh, I just love seeing a different language in general applied to screens or mockups that I think that I, that would look like something that I'm creating, but put a different language, put a different character style. It's a totally different thing. Um, so this is a, I love hearing, we love hearing where you guys are coming from. We have Canada on the map, we have Germany. Uh, we may or may not have, you know, we may be somewhere, we may be underground, who knows? I don't know where Ooh, we are. Maybe. Um, that could be fun. <laughs> I don't know, maybe be. not, probably maybe not. Maybe in the North Pole, I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, it's getting, we're getting uh, into the holidays, who knows? Um, I'm yeah. really digging the, your, uh, your center record icon. Really I'm, cool. I'm, it's interesting. Um, I don't know if it hundred percent makes sense because it's a little, it deviates away from the standard record icon. It's a little bit fun. Those dots around it. 
I don't know if it makes sense, but you know what? We're going to run with it. This isn't going to eventually be a project, so we'll, you know, we'll do it. Um, one other benefit, going back to the hitbox comment, but one of the other benefit of that is you now have this large, even though you can't see it, you have this large space to select. So many of you might be aware that selecting very thin icons is not typically easy, you know, especially if you're zoomed out, it's hard to select. But now that you have that hitbox, you can basically click anywhere and just select the thing, right? Yep. Now, it's one thing really, I really might, important. yeah, one thing I might try, I'm thinking the icons are a little small. What do you think, Alexis? Yeah, I would say, I would say almost it's hard, you know, it's hard. It, and this is actually one of my favorite things to do with XD is, uh, is prototype directly on a phone. And so it's hard yeah. always to see it when you're designing on a screen, especially for a phone, because it's so much larger. Um, those definitely look a little small, but if you, when we, if we want to take it further, you know, and I recommend anyone else trying out the, uh, actually the tethering of the XC prototype to your actual phone and, and, or not even, you don't even have to tether. You can just send a direct link. I'm pretty sure now. You can open a creative cloud document. Yep. Absolutely. It's incredible. So that's another way to make sure to, to know for sure, because we can, we can size and then there there are certain sizes people usually go with that work just fine. Like this size is going to be great. Um, if you really want to make sure and make sure it's legible as well. Say you're designing your very own icons. You want to make sure those are legible. Throw them on it on the actual screen that you're going to be using. Yeah. Cornell says the center button icon looks like a galaxy. Yeah, it, it does. It kind of does. Or like an eye. And it doesn't look like a conventional record button, but it's cool. And let's go with it. <laughs> Absolutely. Why not? Right. And maybe, you know, the, we can run with the whole galaxy thing at some point. Maybe the live experience is taking your followers to a new universe. I don't know. Something like that. We can have fun with it. Right. Love it. Love it. So that's looking a little bit better. You know, those icons are a little bit bigger. They're about 32 pixels high. Plus it has that hotspot behind it. So I think there's, there's definitely some nice room back there to work with. Yeah, it looks great. And just to get a bit fancy, we're going to add a little bit of a colored shadow behind this shape. Possibly. We'll see. I don't know. It sounds great in my head, but it's probably not going to look that very good. I think um, I think you're right on track with uh, the the styles here, especially for a gamer's experience. This looks like every, or it looks like it could fit straight into a uh, to a gamer's uh, home setup. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I don't think the, I don't think it's necessary. I'm I'm getting way too ahead of myself with these fancy effects. All right. So navigation looks pretty good. I do want to make sure to select all these elements and group them together. Navigation. And I can go ahead if I wanted to and enable a stack and that'll create a horizontal stack. And if I wanted to, I can shift things around and just move my icons. Now, of course, that home icon or the record icon would, we want that to stay centered. So in that case, I can just do that and I've rearranged super simply. Look at that. All right, so what else do you think this, this screen needs? So this is, our, this is our home screen, right? So we are coming into the space, we have badges, we have friends. Um, it looks like there could be a messaging. So what is the main goal of the app? Let's say to showcase new games, to talk about new games, games you've played? Possibly, yeah. I think since this is more community-based, you know, users can share games they're currently playing, achievements they may have, screenshots from the games. Um, so I, I'm I'm kind of leaning towards more of like an Instagram style like feed. A feed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. where you've got stories. That, we all love stories, right? You've got stories and you have larger images down at the bottom. It's a great, it's a great, uh, it's a time, it's a tested, a tested method of keeping people engaged. Yeah. So. LinkedIn has stories. I saw, I saw uh, that. Yeah. yeah, I saw visual studio has an extension for stories. That's, that's, that's another level. You know, when your coders are sharing stories. <laughs> oh man. I wonder, I haven't, I haven't seen that, but are they also sharing like screenshots of like 
their key like their their code and like little gifts hiding <laughs> yeah <laughs> as long as you can add a gif a story is going to be interesting we'll oh absolutely if you don't have gifts just don't bother <laughs> lucas says hi from france hey lucas all right so up here many of you are probably familiar with stories and i've even designed stories a few times on adobe live and my master class but you've got your main image of you know a profile picture for example and then you have some sort of a, a border behind it to indicate if they have an unwatched story or you did watch it. So I've got my main profile picture here. It might be a little bit small. I mean, a big. It's a little bit big, I think. I'm going to bump it down just a touch. And I'm going to duplicate the shape and apply a border to it. And in this case, I'm going to bring in some of the gradients that we've been using. So this gradient here is going to be for the user who's logged in to this particular application because they are different colors sometimes. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger mm. like that. And I do want to tweak the rounded corners just a little bit. And it's something some designers don't pay attention to is when you're working with objects with rounded corners. Let me actually show you a bigger example. You've got this shape here and you might round it I don't know, that looks pretty good. Somewhere right, well, let's go for 32 pixels, right? And if you were to duplicate this shape and make it larger, let's change the color, move it behind, something like that, right? It, it looks okay, but visually, because the ra uh, corner radiuses are identical and that shape in the background has been enlarged and pushed out, there's a little bit of, you can kind of see it at this level, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, so, not, it's a little uneven. It's a little uneven, yeah. And you might think, you know, just make them the same border radius, but you actually want to decrease, or I guess increase, but you want to bring in that corner radius of the larger shape just so visually it kind of lines up. Yep, looks good. Looks good. It's true. Yeah, sometimes you can't rely on on the numbers. Sometimes it is a very much, you have to trust your instinct as a designer and your eye, and you have to train that eye. And a good place to train that eye, Behance. Indeed. <laughs> or just, you know, staying on your phone. I like to joke, I joke with my, <laughs> I joke with my wife a lot. She's like, you're always on mm. your phone. And I was like, it's my, it's my work, I have to. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> I was like, it's a, I'm training my eye. I'm not We're on all TikTok just hooked or anything. On our phones. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. I think that could work. Mm -hmm. One more thing we're going to need is some sort of a plus button just to let users know that you can add. I don't know about the pink though. Mm. And here's yeah, what I'm thinking. More of a, it's more of like a notification ask uh, error message kind of color yeah exactly and in addition to the the fact that it could be a notification or an error message like you mentioned because we have the ability at the bottom to record and record is usually like a red icon mm -hmm. that could kind of cause a bit of confusion looking back and forth it may not it may um so why user testing so it's uh important so i think for something like this either like a purple or just a standard blue. And then a cute little add button. Nice. Yeah, it was, uh, Cody said, Xbox is a cool app similar. A uh, great way to see what friends are playing. So yeah, so maybe these are, these are snapshots of some gameplay these stories could live in. It's true. Yep, I agree. It's a really great convention. Ooh, I like yeah. that. Yeah. A border so. gradient feature would be very useful. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, that's something the team wants to get to at some point. Additional controls for borders and things like that. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure all of this, all these elements are grouped. I'm going to just call this story. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate one more out like this. I can also make sure to put these into a group and call this stories, stories. And I'm going to turn a stack on horizontal stack. We've done this a few times and duplicate. So now I have another one. Now for this one, because this is not my story or the user's story, this is somebody else's story. We're going to make a few changes to this one. We don't need the plus button. And then two, typically on these stories, the, 
border is different. So I'm going to bring in that pinkish purplish color and just use that as the other person's story like that. <laughs> and then, and of course you can also use a repeat grid for something like this, but I'm going to stick with a stack because they're cool. Nice. Yeah. And duplicate and duplicate, duplicate. Nice. And duplicate. I'll just do a few more. <laughs> and the reason I'm doing that, we've got a few of these stories kind of hanging off the artboard. And one thing you would probably want to do, especially when you're user testing this, is figure out if users understand how to swipe to see more of these stories. So for that, I have the entire group of stories selected. I'm going to go ahead and uh, enable a horizontal scroll within the properties inspector. And it's automatically going to snap to the side of my artboard, but I may want to give a little bit of more room on the left-hand oh. side. So I can just adjust these bounds like this. And now I can swipe around. Very nice. Yeah. Are you a big fan of stories, Alexis? I am. I do love a good story. <laughs> you know, I find myself using stories more than I, I I'm big on Instagram, not, not big in like, popular wise, but I, I use Instagram a lot. I love Instagram. Um, but I find myself using stories more than I find myself using the actual feed of content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. They definitely, they definitely figured out. I remember when those started to appear, everyone was very hesitant, but they, they definitely overlapped that Snapchat instant moment because people were not using Instagram as an instant moment capture anymore. Yep. Um, that, that's, that's a really, that's a great sign of, of a company who's listening to and watching their users and having a good sense of like what features are going to really going to stand out. And there, now we have stories. Um, yeah. It, you bring up an interesting point about listening to users, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when I remember very vividly when Instagram stories came out, it was basically Snapchat stories, right? It was the mm -hmm. exact same name, same features essentially. And everyone's like, Instagram is copying Snapchat. And sure, on the surface, absolutely. It's a, almost an identical feature. Mm -hmm. However, Instagram didn't do it just because they hate Snapchat and want to copy their features. They probably did it because users were asking for stories. In you know, A lot of users use Instagram who don't use Snapchat. Mm -hmm. And th they saw Snapchat with this fun little stories feature. And they said, hey, Instagram, I want this. And, okay. and Instagram got enough requests and they did it. That's usually how these, these features come to be. 100%. 100%. It's, it's just hearing and listening and being being right there with your user along the way. Um, yeah, it's great. Speaking of speaking, be, speaking of being right there in about, what are you saying about an hour, less than an hour. Yeah, less than an hour. We'll have the artist spotlight. So this is when we actually get to go through our community and chat. I'm talking directly to you and uh, pick somebody in our in our Adobe XD Behance, Adobe Live community who's really been uh, outstanding or being really needs a little bit more of an, a little boost. And we want to give that to them and give them a platform. So we'll be going through an artist's uh, Behance profile towards the end of our stream. And if you look at the top next to info at a to top of your chat, you'll see a way to nominate yourself or anybody you think really should be uh, showcased. So um, I love, I love that we're doing this. You know, there's so many, I love giving a platform to, to people who, who, who deserve a platform. So uh, that's in about an hour. Um, but yeah, speaking of stories, speaking of stories, yeah, that's what they're everywhere. Behance has them too. Pretty well, that's cool. right. Yeah. Yeah. They're literally everywhere, but, um, we love the feature. Yeah. So I'm thinking for this section here, this is the, you know, the larger feed of content. I want to showcase a few things. You know, of course the username or the user profile picture right up here, the person's username and, you know, on many feeds, one of the other, one of the sub information is location. Ooh. It probably doesn't make sense to put location in a gaming feed unless, unless it's like an event. So maybe that could be um, an option, right? But they're sharing their games. They're sharing screenshots and achievements. So you may, maybe we can use this area to showcase what game they might be playing. Love it. 
And this will be right up here, the nice large image, which we'll fill in shortly. And then down here, we might want a few more things. We might want, you know, we, we've got those, the standard buttons that you're used to, the like button, the comment button, the share button. So I'm gonna hop over back to Nucleo. And of course I could also use the plugin that we used yesterday, the icons for design plugin. But let's go ahead and look through some of these icons. That's a fun one. A little thumb. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to find some gaming specific icons, but I couldn't really, I mean, a thumb is a thumb, right? A yeah. heart is a heart, a star is a star. A joystick, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, man, it could be, an, that, that's an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. Kind of throw back, we'll throw back to some physical, you know, like the D-pad, old school. <clears throat> yeah. A star feels pretty, very gamey, right? It does. And then maybe a share icon. Rob Zilla is in the house. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, let's see how, uh, it looks a little bit large. So I'm, I'm actually gonna grab all of these icons, turn off responsive resize. And the reason I'm turning off responsive resize, let me actually go back. You know, a lot of people, this is a border-based icon. So you might just select this icon and start enlarging it. But sometimes depending on the direction you're enlarging, as you can see here, it's going to, things are gonna happen, right? Cause it's vector-based. So responsive, that's what responsive resize does. It, it resizes things without scaling them strangely. But if you want to scale them uniformly, I would just suggest turning off responsive resize. In some cases you can also hold down the shift key as you're resizing but that'll allow me to just scale them as you would expect. It's looking a little bit, I might actually, let's go down to one. That could potentially work. Now, here's one area where you want to turn responsive resize back on, right? I have it turned off and I have all three of these icons selected. If I were to just, whoop, right? Responsive resize is off. So it's scaling in, scaling them horizontally. And this obviously looks not good. So responsive resize turned on and whoop, that's a bit better. Nice. Yeah. All right. One thing I wanted to showcase, let me actually start, you know, we talked about stacks. Rob is going to be excited about that. We talked about stacks. Um, let's go ahead and put all of these, all this information inside of a group or several groups possibly. Actually, you know what? Let's just select all of it and see what happens when I turn a stack on. So I'm going to place it into one group. I'm going to call this uh, content card and let's turn stack on. So it defined it as a vertical stack, which is exactly what you what we want, but you're going to notice, and I think we talked about this yesterday. Every time I do this, my mind is blown. Mm -hmm. XD realized that the majority of the content's going down the card. And it also realized that all of this information was not in a group. It was all floating around. So it helped me out a little bit and it popped it all into a group for me, which is wonderful. Look at that. Yeah, same thing with these icons. I just wish XD was even smarter that it would name the groups for me. That would be something. <laughs> whoever, whatever um, software, whatever, whoever figures out a way to have us, to organize our, our layers so well that it's like, it's, we don't have to do any real extra thinking. Whoever figures out that magic, man, that's, that's who's going to get ahead. I think it's so. Still, it's still one of those things where it's, it's a hot mess of a place <laughs> in all, in all different uh, design tools. So, yeah. And you can already see like my, my layers panel. It's, it's okay right now because I'm live and I want to make sure I don't make a fool of myself, but when I'm designing by myself and I'm experimenting with things, mm -hmm. you, you've got like rectangle 9,462 in the layers panel. And it's like, oh no, mm -hmm. what have I done? I know. I know it's, it has not been maybe the, and who knows, who knows who will do it perfectly. I think, you know, XE has done some great job. I really, I've always really appreciated the way they've organized with those little icons and really giving it a good sense of visual hierarchy, but it's still, it's still hard. Absolutely. Even pro designers so, are, have a hard time with their layers. Oh, all the time. I see files so many, so often from professional designers. They, they're a hot mess. They're beautiful, but a hot mess. So I've got this card that we're working on. I just put everything into a stack and it also enabled padding. And if you're unfamiliar with padding, here's how it works. 
So you've got this card and you've got a bunch of images inside of it. And when padding is turned on, XC is going to look at the background layer, which I can just name just so we, we know what we're working with. Okay. It's going to look at the background layer, which is the layer at the very back of the... I'm going to catch myself. It's the element at the back of the layer stack. It could be a shape. It could be a Boolean object. It could be a lot of different... It could be a group of many other objects. So you can get a little bit creative with your, your padding. In this case, it's a simple shape layer. Um, and then it looks at everything above it. And it takes a look at the positioning and it automatically defines the padding. So we've got 16 pixels at the top, none in the side because we have this large image. And then we have 53 pixels at the bottom, right? We of course want it to kind of be a little bit more uniform. So in the properties inspector, I'm just going to 16, boop, and there we go. Now what's cool about this is that that padding is locked into place. So if I dive in here and maybe I want to add an additional, let's say a text layer right below this, I can grab my text layer and whoop, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Keep it now, clean, speak, keep it in organized. Yeah, exactly. And you don't have to worry about rearranging or resizing things manually. XE just does it for you. Now, speaking of text layers, if you miss the news, we now have three different types of text. We previously had two, which was area text and point text. But now over here to the right, we've got three of them. So we have auto width, which adjusts the, the width of your text box as you're typing, as you'd expect. Auto height, adjusts the height, and then fixed. So no matter how much or how little you put inside of that box, it's always going to remain the same size. I do have auto height selected. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start um, typing something. Let's see. Um, Uh, I love watching right? people and, type. <laughs> yeah. And what you probably noticed is that not only did the size of the text box expand as I got to the next line, but because it's inside of a group with a stack and padding enabled, it also pushed down that box in the background, which is amazing. So clean. Yeah. So good. Yeah, I really love, I really love that. You know, and that's something that it's one of those um, tasks that designers do. You know, you, you just write a bunch of copy, you kind of like align it and it's a little annoying, but you do it a lot and, and you don't realize how often you're, you're realigning or resizing your text perfectly to make sense within whatever shape you're creating that, whatever card you're creating for. So um, it's one of those things that I don't even think I realized as a des designer I needed. And yeah, uh, I completely agree. Right? Yeah, it's when I like, when I yeah. yeah, when I first started playing with some of these features, um, I think we were talking about this yesterday with was it three D transforms possibly? Mm -hmm. You know, when you when you first use a feature, you're like, okay, sure, it's great. I'll use it once in a while for very specific things, mm -hmm. but especially with stacks and padding. I'm using it all the time. And it's at the point where I don't really notice that I'm using it. I just turn on, turn on a padding or turn on stacks because it's kind of ingrained in my mind right now. But you don't realize how, how much of a struggle it was beforehand yeah. when you had to manually move things around. And now it's just, you know, you want to add something or you want to like duplicate these icons, for example. Yeah. And how many left times you were left aligning or right aligning and resizing and you don't really think about it because it's just kind of part of the job. Yeah. But when you have something like this, I can imagine, I can imagine the amount of you, you don't realize how much time you freed up to play these Spider-Man games. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's an exciting feature. I'm, I'm really into it. I hope, I hope, uh, I hope everyone gets to play with it more. Um, I agree. It really gets to get ingrained. <laughs> Let's go ahead and add some content just to kind of brighten up some of these areas. And I do want to go back to the, oops, actually it's in my assets, my libraries, the toy faces. Oh, love them. I love these. I'm just going to drag a few faces throughout the document. Now, if you were using a repeat grid, as we showed yesterday, you can grab, drag a bunch of toy faces or images directly into these squares. I love that blue hair. That looks great. So fun. 
There we go. And then for this particular area, what I'm gonna do is I'll hop over to Finder and I do have some games, some images from games. So here's the Spider-Man game, pop that in there. And it just, you know, it gives a whole new life to your designs. It really does. Content and good content and beautiful yeah. content, um, you know, and uh, especially when you're mocking up something and, and it really helps um, to have something that looks good. Make sure you're, it's the correct size. Make sure it's, you know, not completely, um, completely stock. You know, so that you've really taken some time and gotten some cool, cool content for your, for your mockups. Um, yeah, that's cool. I heard my game is awesome. It looks awesome. I've been watching yeah. a lot of videos on it, um, spe spe specifically showing that you know the ray tracing on and off. Um, the graphics look incredible. I know, right? And that's the that's release that's the only one that's been released with the PlayStation, the new one, correct? Or it's like the yeah. newest game to come out with it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not I think, a I'm not a gamer, so par there pardon aren't many, me. <laughs> yeah, there aren't many big launch titles at the moment. There were supposed to be, you know, Cyberpunk's 2077 was supposed to be out. They kept pushing that back a little bit. It's really cool. It's really cool. Let's get some nice. sack boy in there. Come on, computer. There we go. All right. Let's get another toy face. Pop that in there. Boop. Uh, what's oh, oh no? What's the what's the game? I forgot what this game is. I know his name is Sackboy. Someone in the chat. I'm will, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll come in real quick. I'm sure it will. But <laughs> while while someone's gonna remind me, and I, I it's like on the tip of my tongue. But I'm going to grab this entire group of content, which you may have caught. I've been uh, using stacks, so I can very easily duplicate more down the artboard, and also let me actually just duplicate one more. Just Oop, duplicate and I've got another one down there. Is it a uh, little big planet? Yes. Did someone put yeah. that in the chat or did you look it up? I looked it up. Nice. Thank you. I do remember because you know what? I remember I remembered that uh, creature as well. I was like, that does look familiar. All right. Sweet. So I've got this group of content going down my artboard, but of course I, I want it behind the navigation bar. So I'm just going to make sure to whoop, drag this on down. I'm noticing some of the bad layer naming down at the bottom, which I'll, I'll fix in a moment. What, what even is this? What is this? Oh, this is the profile picture. There we go. What I'm are you? For, <laughs> for consistency. So this is our little profile person and pop that in there. That looks a bit better. All right. So we've got our stories at the top that we can scroll through. That looks really, with the toy faces, this looks really nice. That's cool. And then we have this feed of content. We may also want this feed of content to be scrollable. So I do have the group selected. I'm gonna turn on a scroll group again. This time it's going to be a vertical scroll group. And I'm just gonna pop it right about there. Actually, you know what? I wanna scroll down. And the reason I'm doing this is because I wanna get fancy again. On the background layer of this navigation bar, let's see what a background blur looks like. Now that's not a good background blur, but I'm gonna drop the, I'm gonna bump up the blur and then drop the, the uh, brightness a little bit oh, that's or a cool. lot. Just, I, you want it very subtle because, you know, going back to what we were talking about, about the gradients earlier is if you have a really strong background blur and just to show you what I mean, something like this, right? You have a lot of colors going on and let me drop this a touch. So there's a lot going on here and that's gonna cause accessibility problems. So by just dropping this, let me actually just undo. You have a little bit of a background blur kind of seeping through. So if I were to preview this artboard and start scrolling, you're noticing it's rendering in real time. It's just kind of, it adds a nice touch to this design. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Now, a big question might be, is do we want to put the stories? Because I think on Instagram and these other platforms, as you scroll down the feed, the stories also go with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I can copy this. I'm going to pop it into this group here. And I want to make sure that I adjust the bounds correctly. That's a bit better. Nice. Yeah. 
All right. I'd love to hear what the chat is uh, is thinking about this. That is <laughs> debating the name of the uh, little big planet. <laughs> uh, oh, not yes. debating it. Um, they're kind of they're all they're all letting us know. Um, asking about toy bases as a plug in an XD question mark. It's not. It would be cool if there was a plugin. Um, I should I should contact the developer and see if he's up to it. But it is a it's a collection of premium. Let me go back there. Toy faces. It's a collection of premium. Someone ho hopefully will put a link in the chat. It's a collection of premium avatars. Basically, they were all rendered by an artist, and I think the entire collection, including the ones with the black backgrounds as well. I think it's. I think last. I think when I purchased it, it was ten dollars. I'm not sure if that's changed lately, but. That's not bad, right? It's cool. It's pretty cool. There was a comment, I think it might have been Voodoo Val, and I thought it was really interesting, uh, talking about being able to appear online or offline when playing a game. And I'm wondering if that's something you can implement for uh, you know, this type of app because we're kind of doing a currently playing type story. Um, right. So appearing on and offline seems to be a big gamer and anybody at this point, right? Because we're also locked into our screens. Yeah, um, absolutely. Feature. And you know, this copy, there could be different tenses, right? Played Spider-Man mm, or playing, mm -hmm. currently playing. There, we could also incorporate the standard green bubbles or red bubbles for if you're online or offline. Uh, so they're saying still $10, sweet. Still 10 bucks, nice. And Ricardo asked, XD is for prototypes, right? Is it possible to export a full functional app on Android slash iOS? So there isn't a magical export button. That's very difficult to do. Uh, even companies who are specifically in this no code world, they find it difficult because it's very hard to go from design to code and, and make it perfect, right? That being said, there, you know, of course, XD itself offers developer specs or design specs. So you can grab CSS, you can grab SVG, download your assets, provide all that to developers with sizing and padding, that sort of thing, right? There are also a lot of plugins. Anima is probably one of the most recent ones that they do a fantastic job at being able to, you know, transition from design to a functioning website. Still won't be perfect but it's a step in the right direction. And then on the plugin front, you know, we recently released an extension for Visual Studio Code and Google has a Flutter plugin. So there's a lot of ways, you know, developers are starting to kind of get in that direction, mm -hmm. but still a little bit of a, it's not a one click, I wish it was, but it's, it's not a one click solution. Yeah, I mean, who knows down the line in general, like with this type of work, if, if there ever will be, because there is always, been that bridge for there's always a developer handoff moment there are a lot of plugins if anyone has a great plugin you know anima is the one for that i think is doing it really well um but generally yeah but prototypes are i like to say smoke and mirrors a little bit um mm -hmm. but in a good way um really trying to narrow down and get into a either a, a design the way it looks you want to showcase that and that's why xd is really great really in line it's already it's an adobe product you can get your visual stylings perfect but also prototypes are just explorative and you know i think i think uh you want to you want to explore before you fully ship a project a uh, product um so the prototype gets you pretty far maybe not a full Absolutely. functioning app but i think all of the different iteration phases you can definitely do here um and the handoff's only getting better I agree. Mm -hmm. Let's see who has just joined. Let's see, Gus joined us a little while ago. Hi, Gus. Hi, Gus. Oh, let's see, any other questions here? Uh, Cornell says, should the, should the like button be aligned to the avatar of the username? Ooh, interesting. Talking alignment. How's the alignment looking? Oh, yeah, possibly. Let's see how things are looking. Oh, it's close. It's, it's close. close. But it's not there yet. Yeah, I think it makes sense farther to the left like that, and not not kind of more in. <clears throat> eh. that sort of I oh. think it's close enough. <laughs> I think it's close enough. We're gonna run with it. Nobody saw anything. It's just a gif of that. That's what's gonna come out of these streams. Just that. <laughs> I think so. Um, I don't like that two up there. I'm just gonna delete it for now. One thing I want to do. I want to explore something interesting. Um, 
we've got this like button and you, you might be familiar with Facebook. They have, if you, I don't want to say hover because it's not necessarily hover. Um, if you hold your finger down the like button, a little thing pops up that allows you to choose different reactions, smiley faces, angry faces, and that sort of thing. It may not necessarily make sense for a game experience like this, but I want to try it and see what happens. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is this like button here. I'm going to turn this into a component. So I'm going to press the plus button over to the right, turn this into a component. You can also see it in your assets. There it is right there. And I want, even though we're on mobile, right? And mobile doesn't have hover unless you're using a new iPad with mm -hmm. mouse and, or trackpad. I'm going to add a hover effect. So don't, don't scream at me, chat. I'm going to add a hover effect on mobile just so that we can kind of simulate the, the hold down your finger interaction. But again, hover doesn't typically apply, but we're running with it. Now inside of here, I'm going to put all of these new options. So I did import this mm -hmm. set of reactions from Adobe stock. So I did download them there. Or I, yeah, I license them over there and grab them. I'm simply going to copy them. Actually, I'm going to put these into a group if they're not already. Emojis. Emojis. There we go. And I'm going to pop them into this. Comp oh, those are large. Some, some big reactions. Those are big. Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. A responsive resize is doing its thing. Just trying to, but it's not well, what I want. Well, you're resizing. I just want to remind the chat we're almost about ten minutes until we do an artist spotlight, and uh, and, and then we'll, we can hop back in. We'll hop back in with uh, with Howard at the end. So just want to let everyone know that's happening. Um, yeah, look, looking good. I love the reaction. So you're gonna try. You're gonna use the hover to kind of help us with the kind of prolonged touch or the the hold down. Yep. Type of effect. This is cool. This is awesome. Yeah. Now we're obviously running into some weird stuff, right? First of all, there it's underneath the image. So we want to fix that. And the second thing is because we have a stack enabled on this entire content card, as I revealed the hover effect, it kind of moved things around. And you don't have to worry too much about that because it's not going to affect the actual prototype. But we do want to make sure that um, this is on top of the image. Now, Here's the image here. I'm going to name this image. The way, one of the ways stacks works is it also looks at the layer order. So if I were to move this up, it's going to bump it up, up here, which is a little bit strange, right? Um, so one thing we can do is we can actually grab the entire icons group. And I believe this is going to work. We can turn on 3D transforms and just oh, set yeah. the Z depth to one. So you're essentially telling it to be on top of everything else. And now it's on nice. top. Nice. Nice. So it's a, it's a little bit. So if you want to make sure that one of your objects is always, always, always going to be on top of something else, even though in the layers panel, it may not be right. Here's a perfect example or navigation. For whatever reason, I may have it at the very bottom of my layer stack, which is all the way down here. Don't know why, but it's possible it may be down there. But you want to make sure that even though it's at the bottom of the layer stack, it's always going to be on top of all the other objects. Just set the Z depth, which is hiding underneath 3D transforms. Set that to like one or two or anything above. If you made changes to all any of the other objects, just make sure it's above those. And it's always going to be up there. Mm, that is really cool. And yeah. so because you made that in that first component, does it apply to the rest of those likes? Down your, so down I, page. it would. Um, mm -hmm. However, I did not. I turned this into a like afterwards, or mm -hmm. I turned this into a component mm -hmm. afterwards. So these ones are not. Got but it. what I could do is just copy and paste, or or if this entire thing was a repeat grid, which I stupidly did not use a repeat grid for this example, it it would have it would have done that. No, I mean, hey, we all make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> um that was uh and megan thinks you're a genius so thank you i appreciate that um quick question before we get into you know get closer to the artist spotlight maybe you want to answer this uh any uh, jessica asked did you watch any sessions from this year's adobe max if which so which which would you recommend to kind of review and watch 
Oh, I feel so bad for saying this, but I did not watch any sessions. I gave two sessions and I, I watched those with the, the sound off because I hate my voice, but I watched those with the sound <laughs> off just because I was, I was chatting with the everyone else who was watching, but I didn't, I haven't had found the time to actually sit down and watch some sessions. Um, there was one session I was trying to watch by one of our Japanese evangelists and he just does some amazing work with 3d transforms mm -hmm. and if, if you if you have some time check that out it's in japanese but there are subtitles but it's wonderful it's a wonderful session yeah there's so many amazing things going on i mean i i was really i was really interested in what was going on with xd so i watched a lot of those mm -hmm. maybe that's maybe those are the ones since you're in this on the stream as well to kind of tune into um obviously i'm interested in what's going on with adobe live there's a couple of new news there which is really cool Oh man, the new the future the uh, the future of live is really amazing, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's very very cool. Um, and uh, just anywhere anyone's drawing, I feel like that's the best way to like zen out and relax. It's even better. It's better than a podcast is watching someone draw or listening to them talk while they draw. Um, yeah, they're... and the fact that anybody can is going to be able to go live and, I, I know. and directly from the application that they're working on is so cool. It's incredible. It's incredible stuff. So, you know, we're just, uh, that's, that was fairly recently. So, you know, things are just starting to kind of hit upon their best, their best use case scenarios. So uh, let's see, let's see the time. What are we at right now? We still got some time. Yeah. So one more thing I want to point out, and this is again, another new feature. And I touched on it yesterday a little bit is the nested hover right? Again, mm. mobile, not typically using hover, but we're going to run with this. And, you know, possibly inside of here, when I hover over top of any of these icons, I may want them to enlarge or turn a little bit, have a very slight effect. So I'm going to turn this into a component. And the new default behavior is that your components inside of other components, your nested components are instances, even though if you, even those you create when inside of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just edit this main component, add a little bit of a hover effect. And I'm gonna keep it very simple. I'm just gonna select these, enlarge it just a little bit, and maybe mm. just very slightly rotate this heart. And now, let me find the likes. If I preview this, I can hover over the thumbs up and then hover over that heart Again, very subtle. Oh, I love it. So subtle. Yeah. And Power of course I can go through and, micro. yeah, I could go through and, and do the exact same thing for all of the icons, but I don't want to waste too much time, but that's kind of where we're at. That's so great. And, and you know what, animation wise, it's, you really don't need to do much for, for a mobile or a web experience to really change the viewers, um, reference, eye reference and what they're doing. It doesn't need to be a crazy animation. Um, I love yeah. your approach. It really just a, a small tweak here and a small tweak here. And it's enough to, to, just to remind someone that something's there. Um, that's awesome. This is great. I just want to check time. Um, how are we doing? I'm really excited. I think we're going to, we're going to go to artist spotlight pretty soon, but we're going to come back and we're going to really wrap this up, kind of go through the full experience, um, see where we're at. Um, obviously Howard's go all, will always be around in the lives for, for all of our needs and always have about a minute. Uh, we have about a minute so we can watch you. Watch yeah. Stuff. And by the way, if anyone's uh, wondering, I will, will be continuing this experience during some future streams, but one of the things I want to do is eventually when it's really fleshed out and there's a few more screens is provide this to download. I know we're working internally on some additional ways to get to UI kits, possibly directly from the XD application. And I would love to bring this to that experience. So uh, yeah, eventually this will be available to download. I may have to swap out some assets, probably can't use the Spider-Man asset, but yeah, stay tuned for that. Yeah, that would be amazing to have just like straight up kits from, from some of these sessions because we're, I feel like most of the time it's hard to design in four hours total and it really is less than that design anything yeah, um that's true it's very complete so usually there's a lot of extra extra working on the edges of these projects and these need to be shared so it's fairly exciting it's good to hear all right let's do this 
All right. So I think we're gonna we're gonna yeah. switch over to the artist spotlight for a few minutes, and then. Let me just move something okay. around here. We're doing it live. Doing it live. All right, we're doing it. We're here. <laughs> uh, my screen was flipped. I don't know why I didn't just like think about it at, at 30, but I couldn't see the time. Um, all right, cool. We're here. All right. Brian Jess Vegaza. I love the profile picture. I love that dual tone thing going on mm -hmm. here. Okay, so this is who we're spotlighting, you guys. Ba -ba -ba -bum. We need we need like a sound to play when we're spotlighting someone. Um, we do. That'd be cool. Really do. Uh, let's see. He considers himself a UI UX designer and a graphic designer, so it's awesome multidisciplinary. Uh, we we went through yesterday, kind of showcasing what the Behance portfolio, how to best use that Behance portfolio space layout space. Um, obviously, keeping your social icons intact and keeping them around, and you know being present for those is really important as mm -hmm. well as allowing it allowing people to message you and allowing people to find you right because it's great to show stuff but what if someone wants to hire you um so let's look at some projects we have a lot of graphic design it looks like which is awesome so ooh. oh those is that a cinnabon yeah <laughs> that's do we both yep yeah <laughs> it's lunchtime mm -hmm. we're both there <laughs> oh. oh i love it that's really cool i love i love taking text and morphing it into into a shape like this. Or I love when, I don't know whether it's trending right now. I don't think it is. I've always loved this effect. It's very uh, 60s. Yeah, me, and, and the fact that it's still legible, mm -hmm. I think is, it, it's fantastic. It's very difficult to do, but he really nailed it. We got, it's Sin Amon. I think there could be some some wordplay there. Yeah. Um, really cool. I love it. So we got some, we're showcasing it on some maybe you know, maybe their cards, maybe their, I don't want to say their business cards, but showcasing them on a different space. Those mock-ups are pretty clean. We're loving the image you used. So this is very cool. Very, very cool. All right. Away from the food. <laughs> um, this is, I mean, I'm going to go into this matrix. Okay. I like to enter the matrix. Ooh. Ooh, what is happening? That's fun. I took the blue pill. Ah, very cool. Very cool see it on some shirts, some different variations of the logo. Yeah, I love those variations. Oh, these are really cool. Matrix. Ooh, switching it up for packaging. Okay. Yeah. There's some really bright, interesting patterns behind it. Yeah, I'd love to see those patterns again somewhere. Yeah. Matrix, kind of logo. Looks great. You know, this mm -hmm. is one of those things where it's like, I love, I, I don't know about you, Howard, but graphic design is, I feel like the root for a lot of designers. A lot of visual designers get their start in graphic design. And it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, you you love to go back and see it and see what people are doing. And and I think of it more as an art art form in itself at this point, the way people- Oh, absolutely. It. Up until a few, just a few years ago, I was primarily a graphic designer working in Photoshop. Um, and you know, it kind of led me in the UI and UX direction. And it looks like Man Manish in the chat kind of has a question around that. We'll get to that mm -hmm. question after the spotlight. Nice. I love that. I love questions about, I love questions. Um, look at this. We were doing, we're dead. we got a book cover and I love, you know, as a graphic designer, you're showcasing all the different touch points you create for, um, you know, you're not just logo. You're also book designing. You're also playing around with different variations of, of the same thing. Um, this is cool. Yeah. I don't know what the, the actual book is, but it's got a very mysterious feel to it. It sure does. It is very mysterious. Yeah. And I love the mock-ups. Honestly, your portfolio is awesome. I, and I'm really digging how you're mocking things up. So let's go to more towards his more recent work. Cause that was like his older work, which is, yeah, it's solid. Um, let's go into this perf athletics performance, athletes performance. Train player cover. So this could maybe, are these slides? Okay, there's slides, cool. Nice. Yeah, and you know, the thing about creating slides and they really do overlap into, you know, what is a, what is a, what is a website? Just, a, just another 
type of slide and that's another type that's of pitch deck, <laughs> pitch deck yep. right so you know it I looks like he, he created this possibly in photoshop based on the the tag on the right but you know a lot of designers mm. are using xd now to create slides and presentations they are they are yeah oh that's right it's in photoshop yeah i'm i think the one thing brian that i would i'd love to see is a little bit more ux ui work um, so far we have a lot of graphic, which is stellar, honestly, mm -hmm. really great stuff. Um, really fun, di you know, a variation of the type of work that you can do, maybe different variations of types of clients you can work with, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think, I think you're, so we know you have a great visual eye, which is great. Uh, I think we're just missing some, some UX work, at least if it's yeah. up there, I want to, I want to see it because. That's what you have on your portfolio or on your, as what, it's what you call yourself. More food. I'm in. Still hungry. I'm so hungry. <laughs> Munchy girl. Yep. Okay. Very cool. We'll look the, let's look at one more. Maybe offer any. I, I appreciate, I really appreciate a graphic designer's portfolio. It's so relaxing to me. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Oh, here we go, some mock-ups. Ah, that's nice. Just drink some <laughs> tea and look through a graphic designer's a UX and UI portfolio. Usually there's a lot of stuff going on, which is important. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, yeah, great so job, it, Brian. It was great. I loved it. Um, congratulations, we're spotlighting you. Um, keep doing what you're doing. You know, let's see some UX, UI work, uh, but otherwise solid stuff, man really solid stuff. While we're on my screen, we'll just quickly dive into one more thing that I, I forgot to touch upon during the, mm -hmm. during the other, part, other parts of the stream is the Adobe Creative Residency Community Fund. And we talked about it yesterday, so I won't get into too much in depth, but Adobe really wants to be there for its uh, community and for creatives. And they're trying to do their part and to make sure people who are looking for work or want to start a project or maybe had a hard time during this COVID this 2020 period um, have the necessary tools to create and make and work and do all the wonderful things that they want to do. So um, there is, check this out, check out the community fund. If you know anybody who you want to uplift and make sure they have resources, the applications are kind of rolling um, as the year goes on and into 2021 um, and then funding begins on these dates. So that's kind of a, that's, that's over here. What we can, we can hop back over to, to Howard's screen, but we'll just, well, I'm, I'll leave my, I'll leave this on my screen. <laughs> I love this fund. I love it. I love uh, Adobe taking care of creatives. Oh, it's, it's so amazing. You know, in past years, we've had a very different community. Uh, my, my mind just went blank. The uh, community program, it's mm -hmm. not what it's called, but um, like Help me, Alexis. Outreach. Like outreach, uh, community fund. Are you just sure. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Words. There, there was We're a name the, for, <laughs> the the resident program. Mm -hmm. That's what yes. it was. So we had a very different resident program previously, where we brought in, you know, physically peop physical people. Yes. Not that everyone. Not, not that the other people are not physical. It's getting late in the stream, clearly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we we brought in a handful of people, right? Mm -hmm. And they worked on a project for an entire year, which was a wonderful program. And many hosts on Adobe Live and the daily yep. challenges like Andrea, uh, you know, were in that program. Mm -hmm. But this year, because of COVID, of course, you know, we have two creative residents and everyone in the chat is now um, jumping yeah, in. Creative there. residency, yeah. Yeah, or so we have two residents, but we also have this $1 million fund like Alexis was talking about. And we can extend it to so many more people mm -hmm. who, you know, honestly, a lot of them might be struggling a little bit because of COVID and this pandemic. So wonderful program. Go, yeah. go check that out. Go check it out. Links in the chat. And it's not just, uh, we're not talking just like UX, UI designers. We're talking illustrators, photographers, motion designers, people who are, you know, Maybe there, maybe a lot of companies did layoffs. Who knows? Maybe there's a project they just really want to do and always wanted to get off the ground. This is a great resource for them. Absolutely. So going back to uh, Manisha's comment, he says, hey, I changed career in lockdown. I have learned medium level of Photoshop and illustrations for social media creatives. Can I learn UI and UX? 
I'm 26 and I hope it's not too late. So no, oh absolutely. And I think Val jumped in there and said, never too late. It's never absolutely true. There are so many people who change careers very late in life. And, you know, learning is so accessible these days, even if you cannot go to a physical school or afford a virtual and, you know, expensive virtual school. I don't know where you live, but in, in the United States, it's crazy expensive. Even virtual schools are expensive, but you've got resources like Adobe Live. You have daily challenges and there's a ton of different programs like this out there. Maybe mm-hmm. not as you know in depth as Adobe Live for these live streams, but there are others you can go to and, and check out. Yeah, I think that's really, that really sums it up well, Howard. It's one of those things where 26 is not too late for anything. I would say most people are just kind of getting out there, getting moving around 25, 26. So nothing is too, it's never too late. You could be, you could be any age. There is never too late, especially for, you're right, for learning things that can be learned online on a computer. You know, you're not, it's not necessarily like a trade. You have to be somewhere to do. You just need a computer. And you yep. just need a couple, a couple of uh, different softwares. Uh, Adobe XD is the one of the I think is one is a perfect software to start and to learn all the basics, um, as well as like, you know, a lot of pros are using it, and because of all these new features. But um, yeah, and it's it's one of those things where there's so many different ways to approach this this type of work. Um, it can just be more visually. Uh, more visually guided so getting really really good at being a ui designer and getting into these again into these buttons and components and different states and perfecting iconography and doing stuff like that or you can get into ux which is a little bit more qualitative a little more open a little more discussion based a little, um, all you ut- can u- utilize prototyping tools like xd so you're in great company stick around uh, adobe live to kind of learn Kind of like more we talk a little bit more around uh you know the ui because we have the, these amazing tools um but there sometimes are some really great ux discussions happening so this is one resource there's plenty plenty more that is for sure it's my it's so experimenting sure. with you know what happens when a user clicks on the record button does it take them to a different screen? Does it pop up a little modal of some sort asking, you know, what you want to, I don't know. I'm not sure where I'm going to go with this. It'll probably go to another screen, but you know, you can use things like components and states to mock something like this up, where if you tap on it, this comes up, you can even add an element behind here so that everything is kind of darkened a little bit. So it's more, you know, it stands out a bit, but before we do wrap up, I do want to, tackle one more screen with a few more elements, mostly like, you know, maybe a friend's screen. So if someone clicks on this icon down at the bottom, it'll take them here. And what do you think, Alexis, would you see on a, on a screen like this, on a gaming Ooh. community app and, you know, for a friend's experience? It's a great question because is, is the feed not my friends already? Let's see. It's a good question. Is are those people I follow? Or are those just like the just everyone playing? Um, let's see, friends. I'd expect. I want to know. Maybe, maybe it's maybe it's their their avatars. Maybe it's their uh, maybe the well. It's not a leaderboard because maybe we have that somewhere else. Um, yeah, maybe it's their most recent. Maybe it's just another feed, and this one is specifically for my friends. Or, uh, Possibly, oh, yeah. Yeah. or it's their avatar. I like that. Or maybe their their ranking or um, what they're the best at. I don't know. Let's see. With your friends, you always you're very competitive with your gaming friends. You That's always want to sure. kind of one up each other. So maybe something along the lines of what what they're the best at. Maybe this is the leaderboard. Like maybe this is this is where we can see some of their badges, um, but not necessarily because the leaderboard implies there's like one game you're really good at, and you're like I'm the best at this one. That's so. true. Yeah. Yeah, so some so some of my wild ideas. <laughs> yeah, it could go in uh, many directions. And again, user user testing. You know, when if you were to ask Alexis, what do you think should be on a friend's list? You're going to get probably a very different answer than if you were to ask 
somebody else. And that person's answer is going to be very different than someone else's. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you know, if you ask enough people, you'll kind of find bits and pieces that are similar that you can use for your experience, but never assume that what you think should be on whatever it is, mm -hmm. is the right answer. Cause it's, it's probably not. It's true. And that's exactly why we need to keep asking people. Uh, Jessica asks, uh, what do we like and dislike about working as a UX designer? What is a typical work day like? Oh gosh. Um, I don't know if I'm the right person to answer that. I, You're kind of like the special in between unicorn of a, of a designer. <laughs> I am a unicorn. You are a unicorn. Yeah. Most of my day is spent um, creating, creating content. I do a lot of designing for that content, but it's mostly focused on content creation. Yeah, you do, you do, you do the job many times over in like a, in a macro, in a mini form. Right. Like you're nonstop with it. Um, I would say, I would say, but you, you, but it's interesting. You talked about you going into it from, from coming from Photoshop as more of a graphic designer. What kind of drew you to doing more UI UX work? Yeah. So you know, I, in 2006, I think I started teaching Photoshop on YouTube and I was doing that for quite a while. Ooh, I don't know if I like this. Um, hmm. Let me bring that. That's a bit better. Okay. So I was doing that for quite a while, but I was also at some point I started working for a, a digital talent agency and I was on the marketing side, but I was also doing you know, it's helping with their website. I was, we were developing a few mobile apps and I, I started to really like that, you know, figuring out all these, you know, going through the UX of, you know, what's going to be, what's going to help make this app, you know, successful, hopefully. Um, and I started really liking that stuff. So I, I kind of switched in that direction. Of course, Adobe XD was just coming out at the time, at least in, in a beta. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I kind of ran with that. Yeah, it is more, it is more solutions oriented. You have to, there's a lot more problems, a lot more mini, a lot of problems you have to solve at a time. Uh, and, and then I, I went, came over to UX from graphic design as well. And for me, it was being able to talk to people. And I do spend the majority of my time as you, as a researcher, um, more so than doing fine UI work. Um, and that's, and that's the reason I wanted to do it. And that's why I like it is I get to talk to humans and learn about them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. If you, if you like humans, it's a good, uh, if you like, well, that's the thing is that there's so many different paths with it. You know, I could, I know a lot of designers who UX and UI designers specifically who they don't need to talk to anybody and they don't mind not talking to anybody. They just mm -hmm. want to hear, they just want to hear me say, yeah, definitely keep that button there. <laughs> nope. Yep, we I don't need that you. button there. <laughs> I like <laughs> to say the difference is, uh, UX is, is figuring out where the door goes and UI is painting, is making sure the door looks, is like looking really good. Yeah, I completely agree. Oh, cool, these are really cool. Yeah, so uh, again, just like with the, what was the other thing I was, I was doing? Oh, the emojis. Um, you know, I just brought in an Illustrator file that I grabbed from Adobe Stock and grabbed all the vector images, vector paths and all that fun stuff and just brought them over. Now for this area here, I'm just gonna mock things up a little bit. I don't know what exactly these buttons are gonna be. They might be you know, message buttons, they might be something else, but I'm just gonna pop them in here and see what things, see how things look. Oh, nice. That's some kind of fun. Yeah. Mm, I don't know if I like the star. What are your thoughts? Uh, the star is a little hard to see. Yeah. It might as well, it almost might as well be a circle because it's so a little little chubby star. It's very a little cute. Chubby though. star. It's very cute. But yeah, it's a little hard to see him far away. I agree. That's a bit better. Nice. Yeah, that'll do. Well, uh, I'm loving the questions around around kind of just 
you know, understanding what you're into and, and UX and uh, finding your community. So hopefully, you know, everyone in the chat can, can lift up those, those people asking. Um, looks like Voodooval already connected with Manish. Um, you guys are, you guys are the best. You really are. Um, I love thinking, I love though the end of that question, which is what is your, what does your day usually look like? I like, I love that question. Cause it's like, what, what does anyone's day look like right now? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's true. Every day <laughs> is different. So weird. It's such a weird time. Like my days, I can't like, what is the flow anymore? Um, you know, uh, I miss the commute. I will say I miss a nice commute. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Did I mean, you have a, nice. like a night, nice scenery you drew, you drove through or just, it's just a yeah. time to just kind of escape and it was think. the time I just love. I've all, I, I, I used to have really long commutes. I loved a, a nice, a nice long commute where you get to sit down with a night with a, with a podcast. My last commute was incredible. I biked through San Francisco, like 15 minutes and I beautiful city. Oh, wow. And, uh, I know. So it was like, who doesn't love a commute? Indeed. All righty. Now I do want to try, we've done this a few times with some smaller examples. I don't know how this is going to work, but we're going to, we're going to test XD for a little bit. As you can tell from my layers panel, it's just an absolute mess. All these elements that I've been creating, they're not in groups. None of them. They're just kind of all over the place, except for the, the small icons, right? So let's see what happens if I select all of this. I'm going to pop this into a group. I'm just going to call this card and I'm going to turn stacking on. Let's see what happens. Okay. So we've uh -oh. got our username. We've got, it grouped all of this for me. It grouped nice. all, all of that cool. and all the buttons. Let's, and inside of the, okay. So this did not group it, but if I turn stacking on there, it'll now group the buttons. Wow. That's so cool. Wow. That was, that's some magic right there. I think if you're going to, if you're going to leave the stream with anything, it's, it's that it's the, look how easy you can, by using stacks, look how easy your layers have been created for you. Oh my gosh. That was great. That was nice to watch. That was pretty cool. I can just adjust some of the spacing, but you know what? It's looking, it's looking all right. And of course, because I have padding also enabled, if I needed to add something, maybe some sort of an image at the top for whatever reason, I can just drag one out and it splits everything perfectly. And there we go. But I don't want that. Oops. So these are your friends. Oh, look at that. No easy little heat grid. Drag a few friends down the artboard. We've got, again, our navigation bar is set with a Z depth of one. So even though it's at the bottom of the layer stack, it's still above everything else. And now that we're using a repeat grid, I can go back to our Toy Faces plugin and let's just grab a bunch at the top and not, sorry, not plugin. It's a Toy, the toy Faces library. And there we go. And it also works with, um, I, let me see if I can very quickly find, I'm gonna drag this over just in case there's something that I shouldn't show. Top secret stuff. There we go. That's why you stay for the last three minutes. Top secret <laughs> Top stuff. Secret stuff. <laughs> what, what I'm looking for is, I don't know if I can, if I can find it right now. Actually, let me do this. I have a list of names, just a plain text document of names. No, I can't find it. But what you can do is, is in addition to dragging in images, into a repeat grid, you can also drag in names. Mm -hmm. And there are also plugins that, that you know, you can generate names as well, but um, I don't know if I have time to. Yeah, we're about, we're about two minutes away from the end here. And I think you could probably do it, but um, if you can't, it's all good. And uh, I just want to thank you again, Howard, for really taking us through all of the different variations of how to use stacks and just kind of crushing it with designing in like the four hours that we have this is a hard thing to do so really appreciate it and uh hopefully if anyone's watching from if you watched on youtube good for you come over and watch more of these in behance on behance um and yeah i want to thank uh thanks voodoo val for for helping out in the chat make sure uh wow we're really oh what is this play plugin really quick 
yeah, it's called repeater or repeater, something like that. Um, but it'll allow me to generate names just like that. Boom. And just yeah. like that. Fancy. That was incredible. Well, we just mm -hmm. watched magic happen right in front of our very eyes. And uh, thanks again, Howard. And this was, uh, this was really fun. This was fun. I had a lot it of looks fun incredible. doing this. Thank you. So uh, check out Howard Pinsky all, all over the socials, Twitter. You, you'll see him again on a live to host a masterclass here on, on, on Behance. And he is, he is Mr. XD. So thanks again. And uh, stick around for the Daily Creative Challenge with Jesse Showalter. All right. See you Indeed. later, guys. Thanks, everyone.